Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, precious viewers. Welcome again to this very mighty program. And in this program, precious people, I am looking at the latter visitation that was promised into the church. And in the past program, we looked at what the prophet Joel saw regarding the latter visitation of this hour. I am talking about the coming of the Messiah when the Messiah comes to rapture the church. And so right now, precious people, I would like to advance this discussion today by looking at the value, the purpose of the visitation of God himself into the church. The purpose of the visitation of the cloud of God, the cloud that descended upon the meeting, the mighty mega revival meeting that took place in Kisumu, in Kisumu, Kenya, on December 31st, the year 2012. Let me read here, precious people, on some of the pronouncements that are engraved in the Bible that essentially foretold this time and this visitation. And we shall see that they are in there. Inside there are the designated purposes that Jehovah comes to accomplish in his glory in the church. Turn with me to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 11. And Deuteronomy chapter 11, I'm reading from verses 8 on. It says, Observe therefore all these commands I am giving you today so that you may have the strength to go and take over the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. Verse 9, he says, And so that you may live long in the land that the Lord swore to your forefathers to give them and their descendants a land flowing with milk and honey. And verse 10, he says, the land you are entering to take over is not like the land of Egypt from which you have come, where you planted your seed and irrigated it by foot as in a vegetable garden. And he goes on to say in verse 11, But the land you are crossing the Jordan to take possession of is a land of mountains and valleys, that drink rain directly from heaven. It is a land the Lord your God cares for. The eyes of the Lord your God are continually on it from the beginning of the year to its end. So if you faithfully obey the commands I am giving you today to love the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, Verse 14, then I'll send you, I'll send rain on your land in its seasons, both the autumn and the spring rains, so that you may gather in your grain, new wine, and new oil. I'll provide grass in the field for your cattle, and you will eat and be satisfied. Hallelujah. We see in a very mighty way when the Lord was talking with Israel. The Lord removes Israel from the Egyptian slavery. And as he removed Israel from Egyptian slavery, the Lord looked at Israel in the wilderness on the way to the promised land. And when he looked at Israel, the Lord was very astonished. He was very shocked at what he saw. What he saw and also what he heard. These are people that had been slaves from one generation to the other. 
from one generation to the next. And then, all of a sudden, they began to cry out to the Lord. And the Bible says, and the cry of the Israelites reached Jehovah, the God of their father Jacob. And we see that when the Lord sends Moses, he tells Moses that go and tell the children of Jacob, the children of Israel, that their cry has reached me. And so I have decided that I will go and deliver them. And we see very clearly that when the deliverance takes place, they offer the perfect lamb, the lamb without defect in Exodus 12, and the blood of the lamb is sprinkled on the doorposts, door frames. And when the Lord sees the blood, he passes over them. He does not judge them at the time when he brings his judgment to the gods, the idol gods of Egypt, to the people of Egypt. And we see in that whole arrangement, the slaughtering of the lamb, the sacrificing of the lamb without defect that we see in Exodus 12, verses 5 all the way to 7. We see that that slaughtering and sacrificing of the perfect lamb, the lamb without defect, was actually synonymous. The designation, the consignment that the Lord was placing on Israel as he was telling them, look, when I come to strike the firstborn of the king and firstborn of everybody in Egypt, including the firstborn of the animals. For you, because of this blood of the lamb without defect, I will not strike you. Because that lamb essentially represents and designates and illustrated the perfect blood of the perfect lamb of God the firstborn of heaven, our Lord Jesus, the blood that was already poured to lay the foundation of the earth. And so the Lord was essentially saying that delivering Israel out of Egyptian captivity was all about his vision for Israel. And the vision of the Lord for Israel was that when he delivers them from Egypt, even the way Moses spoke to the king, saying, let my people go. Let my people go that they may worship me. There was a vision here. There was a tremendous vision here. The vision of the Lord when he delivered them from Egypt. And that vision was that Israel may come out and worship Jehovah, worship the Lord. That was the vision. And now we see that when he has delivered them into the wilderness, on their way to the promised land, some problems arise. We remember too well what is happening in the book of Numbers chapter 11. We remember too well how from Mount Sinai, that segment from Mount Sinai towards the promised land, the segment that I call the, 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 the final stretch, the final segment before entry, We remember too well that during the segment from Mount Sinai to the Promised Land, that that is the time when Israel wandered most in the wilderness. 
That is the place where the wandering of Israel in the wilderness took place. And precious people, I want to bring this to your attention. That when the Lord says wandering, he means has lost direction. They had lost direction. They were supposed to be going towards the promised land, but they were going back and forth. And they were saying things that shocked Jehovah. He had just delivered Israel from Egyptian slavery, a cruel slavery, brutal slavery, abusive slavery. They abuse. And he used a lot of power to deliver them from there. So much power. Jehovah himself in the eagle's wings. And then they enter the wilderness and all of a sudden they began to say, look, we don't have food. Look, we miss the meat we ate in Egypt. Look, we miss the huge cucumbers we ate in Egypt. Look, we miss the fish that we ate for free in Egypt. Ah, I cannot believe this. And you read a place where they say, let us raise for ourselves a leader to return us to Egypt. Cannot believe this. He used so much power. Jehovah came down himself to deliver Israel from Egypt, from cruel and abusive slavery. Very cruel. Now in the wilderness, Israel wants to go back to Egypt. And yet, the Lord had a plan for Israel that they may come out by the blood of the Lamb and that out of Israel, now the Messiah would come out to deliver the nations. That when they come out by the blood, from Egypt, the blood of the lamb without defect, it was a prophecy, a symbolism that was saying, hey Israel, out of you will now come the perfect lamb of God without defect, whose blood, from whose blood the nations, humanity will worship, will be delivered. I cannot believe this. That they wanted to go back. They had lost total direction. The Lord had a promise for them. He was leading them to the promise. And then all of a sudden, they begin wandering in the wilderness. Complaining over food, over everything. That's when this very cloud I'm talking about. The cloud of the glory of God the Father descended from heaven, came into the wilderness, and began to give Israel direction. They had lost direction, meaning they had gone astray. When you go astray, that means you now have another destination, not the original destination. How is this possible? That after deliverance, a massive deliverance of power from the world, from slavery in Egypt, from hopelessness, abuse, that now Israel is given a vision, a mission, hope, a promise, a future. But in the, in the journey, in the wilderness, she begins to complain, wandering around, go astray, lose direction, wants to go back to Egypt. That is when this cloud of Jehovah came down. God the Father himself came down in the cloud to give Israel direction. He was afraid 
If I don't, I'll lose them. They are talking as though they are going back. They will go back to Egypt. Precious people, when you look at the church of Christ today, what do you see? The church also was delivered by the blood on the cross. On the cross. By mighty power, power that brought the son of the living God on the cross and then resurrected him by the perfect blood of the perfect lamb of God without defect. But I am shocked. The deliverance at Calvary, when the Lord delivered the church at Calvary, there was one mission, that the church may have a promise, may enter a promise, may have a future, from slavery all of a sudden to a destiny, to a future. To eternity. Eternity of worship. Worshipping Jehovah. Worshipping the God of Israel. Tell me precious people. When you look at the church today. With the liberal theology around. Liberal theology. Everything goes. The world has come back to church. The very world. That Jesus delivered the church from. The church has lost direction. And she has begun to long for Egypt. To long for the world. That's why in the church today, they come and sit and watch football. The house of the Lord. When you look at the dancing and the entertainment in the church during Sunday service, it is like showbiz, show business. When you look at the preaching in the church, there is no worship of the Lord there. When you look at the message being preached, it is a worldly message. It's a horizontal message. Horizontal. Now, the church is not preaching a message that is vertical, that can connect the sheep, connect the nations to heaven. They are preaching how well you can live on the earth. How well you can be wealthy and happy on the earth. I cannot believe it. After the heavy price at Calvary, the price that was the deliverance of the blood, when the blood of the son of the living God himself was profusely shed the floor on the cross. Then now, on the journey to the rapture, on the journey to the kingdom of God, and listen, precious people, this journey through the wilderness was meant to be a journey of repentance. Worship. Purification. Sanctification. Consecration. All of a sudden, it has become desecration. The world now finding its way into the church. I cannot believe this. And that's why the Lord saw that like Israel, the church also on this journey to the promise has lost direction, is wandering back and forth. They say, oh, we are gay-friendly churches. Even homosexuality is in the church. I cannot believe this. I really cannot believe this. That after deliverance, on the way to heaven, the church is now going back to Egypt. Abortions are in the church. 
infidelity. Secular movies are being watched by the church, by the Christians. They are smoking cigarettes. They are drinking alcohol. I cannot believe this. And that's why the Lord has now descended in his cloud again. Because he saw the church was wandering, gone astray, lost direction. And that's why this latter glory of the cloud of God descended on that December 31st, the year 2012, to let the church know that where she had lost direction, now the leadership of God, now there is the leadership of God that now has come to the church. The way he tented, he entered the tent in the wilderness and led Israel to their promise is the same way that Jehovah has now come again. He is tabernacled. I remember recently in one of the visions, the Lord by voice, he spoke and said, tabernacled, and he wrote it across the sky, tabernacled, meaning housed, meaning contained already inside. He has entered now. I want the nation of Finland, Lithuania, Israel, and many other nations of the earth to know that now God the Father himself has come to the church to prepare the church, to give a direction that where she had lost direction, she may now find direction that she may eventually enter the kingdom of God. Otherwise, Jesus the Messiah will be humiliated a second time. He was humiliated on the cross. If God the Father does not come down, did not decide to come, there is a likelihood the church would have remained in the world. And Jesus the Messiah would have been humiliated a second time. On the cross then and now. Precious people. I want you to know. That these are the days. Of the leading of the Lord. These are the days. When Jehovah is saying. Look. I am now here. To be your magnetic compass. To navigate you. To give you direction. And for those who follow the cloud, those who will submit to Jehovah, in other words, they will enter the eternal kingdom of God. They will enter the rapture of the church. I have seen the rapture. Thank you, precious people. I want to end here and ask that if there is anybody that feels he has been touched, and that he would like to return to the Lord. To be ready for that rapture. To find direction. Repeat this prayer with me. Say, precious Jesus. I surrender my life to you. Right now. And repent of all sin. And recognize the powerful work that Jesus did. On the cross at Calvary. And I ask you, Lord, to wash me with the powerful blood of Jesus and set me free from sin. I receive you, Jesus, into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Please establish holiness in my salvation. And let righteousness be the hallmark, 
the standard, the indicator of my salvation. That I may see the glorious kingdom of God, eternity of peace with God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I am born again. If you have said that prayer, please, precious people, call the number below the screen. There are people waiting to pray with you, to give you further instruction, and make sure you are baptized in complete immersion. I'm talking about the way Jesus the Lord was baptized. That the Holy Spirit may descend and baptize you too. And find a Bible teaching church. I mean a Bible teaching church. I don't mean churches of the world. Churches that run other programs. Bible teaching church. That you may be prepared for the glorious kingdom of God. May the Lord bless you. See you in the next program. Shalom, shalom, toda rabah, toda lahem. Amen.